I also see that um, in psychotherapy we are going um, how to say um, we are moving from a, um, a guru era, you know, a time in which uh, Milton Erickson or Steve DeShazer or Harold Beck or other strong personalities uh, was the center of the psychotherapy in a more integrated era. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? What do you think about this integration of different kind of psychotherapy and how can single session therapy give um, its contribution? Bob is much more an expert on integration and work with the Society for Psychotherapy Integration. I just want to say that it's important to be inspired by your teachers mm -hmm. uh, and then let go of them and figure out how you will do it yourself with your, your client rather than I have to be like Aaron Becker or Steve DeShazer or Milton Erickson. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, otherwise you give your power away. Uh, okay. Uh, what do you think? Well, I agree with, with Michael. Um, I'd say the role of a teacher is to inspire mm -hmm. and then to disillusion your student <laughs> this, by being flawed, flawed and... What's that? Is this if you meet the Buddha on the road? <laughs> well, uh, the Buddha on the road is likely to have muddy feet. <laughs> uh, yes, um, so you should look at your own feet, of course. Um, so I, I think this is healthy. Uh, yeah. You also, in one of the papers, talked about um, intrinsic integration. Yeah. What yeah. did you mean by intrinsic integration? Uh, yeah, so the, the paper's title, and it was in the Journal of Psychotherapy Integration, uh, was uh, single session therapy in intrinsic integration question mark yeah. and the basic point was if clients get better in one session regardless of whether it's a psychodynamic therapist cognitive behavioral therapist systemic therapist humanistic whatever um, one session isn't enough for the specifics of the modality of that school of therapy to really manifest themselves. Mm -hmm. Something else must be going on and if we could really figure out what's going on in that one session it would be perhaps the common factor of psychotherapy, um, uh, it, would, it would form the basis by which other many schools of therapy could kind of find their foundation and then perhaps refine it from there. I actually had a discussion at the um, uh, conference with someone who asked about that and he said, well just because patients get better in one session, maybe the cognitive behavioral therapist is helping the, the patient get better in a cognitive behavioral therapy way, yeah. maybe the psychodynamic therapist is helping the patient get better in a psychodynamic way. And uh, that's a valid uh, critique, but it still leaves the question of what's at the root of those different mm -hmm. transformations, yeah. and, and we don't know. It's also the idea of treatment, that we are treating them. Yes. It gets to a... A, kind of a medical model, what dose of the right, you diagnose it and you give it the right treatment and it will fix it. Um, maybe we should think of therapy as conversation. Yes. Maybe yeah. we should think of it as poetry. Yes. I think of it sometimes it's more like drama or theater and maybe I'm the director trying to bring out a performance or evoke something from the person. Um, Many, many, many years ago, I was involved in a psychotherapy research project. I was a postdoctoral fellow, and we developed the therapist action scale. Did you make an interpretation, a confrontation, a reassurance? What did you do? And so was it the number of times you did it? How well you did it? Uh, how much love did you give the person? That's right. Uh, what meaning uh, changed? What happened in the silence? 
Yeah. Uh, so it's very difficult to say, to, to use one model, medicine, how much penicillin or what kind of surgery to do, and to apply it to something else. I think if, I've been on many panels, art or science, the psychotherapy, art or science. Mm -hmm. To me, it's craft and art, it's conversation, it's creativity, it's making meaning, it's poetry and beauty, it's magic. It can be studied scientifically. Oh, people like it this way a little more than they like it that way. You can study painting or music. Do people like it loud or soft or what yeah. color next to what other color? But I think once we buy into the model, then we get into what are the active ingredients and what yes. caused it. And, and, and so I think it's, it's good to open um, we were talking the other day, if someone went to a, uh, a healer in a different tradition than the Western tradition, uh, the conversations we would have would not make a lot of sense to them. Uh, yeah. uh, that's all I want to say. Yeah, well, and because of what Michael was saying, I like to insist that uh, insurers must only pay for therapies which are EVTs, hmm. aesthetically validated treatments. <laughs> yes, right. uh, uh, <laughs> is it beautiful? Does it capture the ear? Yeah. Does it have a, a, a nice taste to it? Does it, uh, yeah. does it make you lean forward? Does yeah. it engage you? Yeah. Uh, that, that would be a, yes. uh, an important criteria. That is an important yeah. criteria set a criteria for me, uh, otherwise, you know. And, and as you know, uh, I strongly advocate looking to the arts, because the arts have languages of technique, mm -hmm. of, of how one structures a painting, how one structures a musical ending, uh, how one structures a musical beginning, mm -hmm. um, and a, a certain theme in music is appropriate for one kind of treatment and not another. Okay. And if, if one thinks of clients coming in with uh, a musical motif mm -hmm. or a, mm -hmm. uh, a certain quality of light on an object, as one might with painting. They're playing a dirge. Yeah. They're always in the dark. Yeah. 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 Um, but so a dirge, it just made me think. The, the Beethoven, the second movement of the Eroica Symphony is a oh. funeral march, and somehow the funeral march gets transformed yeah. in the process into something noble, you know. And, well, how could one do that uh, with a client who is uh, mourning mm -hmm. and in grief and... Uh, Finding the nobility in our suffering, without getting attached to it, no. uh, is part of the process. I think this whole area of single session therapy is very exciting because it's bringing in so many ideas, concepts, models, um, and as it gets to be more, we're going global, is the yeah. you know, theme of the last conference. So we're going to hear about it from other cultures and other ways of thinking, <clears throat> not just uh, cognitive behavioral, psychodynamic, strategic, interactional, narrative, solution focused, uh, you know, just not just the Western flavors. Uh, I think it expands us as people. And yeah. It gets us to I think about other ways of being human. Yeah. I think we have to learn about other people and from other people so that we grow and expand. It's not just to find out about them so we can fix them, but find out from them so that we can f work on ourselves more and just, just to grow in different ways. Yeah. And which, I, yeah. Yeah, which is why, um, I'm just kind of rephrasing some yes. of what you've said. Um, therapists are always worried about what to do uh -huh. with a client rather than how to be with a client. And one of the things I've learned from single session work is maybe the best question to ask yourself before a session is not oh, what should I do, but uh, how can I enjoy being with this person 
during this session. Yeah. In one of your books, maybe Zen and Psychotherapy, I'm not sure, you mentioned client comes to the room, you sort of silently bow to them. Maybe not in a way that they see it that's no, no. to them, but you're orienting yourself to how you're going to be with them and to be open to them and receptive to them and recognize them. As, uh, and, and I would ask, how can I enjoy myself mm. with this person? And when I first started doing that, the first reaction was, you got to be kidding, Bob. No way you're going to enjoy being with this person. You know what they're like. They're one of the... But I went, no, there's, there's got to be a way, and if I can't find ways of enjoying my work, I'm going to quit. Um, and an interesting thing happened, which was when I started looking for ways to enjoy the, uh, my clients, um, I f usually would find them, and the clients liked being enjoyed. Mm -hmm. and they became more enjoyable in yeah. response and it became much more of a feeling of a collaboration that we're both playing with this issue and working on it together and uh, it, 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 a genuine joy how many clients come to therapy feeling not good about themselves yeah so if you say you you should feel better about yourself, you know, I mean, just let's let's look at it rationally, is it's okay, but for you to actually enjoy them, lets them know that they're a person. That they, it takes an effort therapy. sometime. Oh Sorry, yeah, this is stuff I know. It takes an effort sometime to what can I appreciate, what can I like. I know in my presentation at the last conference. I quoted Jay Haley and said, when Jay was asked if there was only one thing you could teach your students, what would it be? Jay answered, without hesitation, love. I would teach them to love their clients. Once you love your client, everything else falls into place. He didn't mean sex or romance. He meant love, deep respect, seeing something good in the person. Uh, and sometimes, you know, that that's difficult to do. But if you can't find something good about them that, that you like, they're going to sense it too, that you're kind of, you're holding your nose, you're, you're yeah. tolerating them, or it's, they're not good. So I think that's the, that's part of it is to find, you know, if I can enjoy it, they'll enjoy being enjoyed, they'll be more enjoyable, when they're more enjoyable, we'll build a positive instead of just trying to grind down a negative. Right, and so I have a rule of thumb, which is if I can't, or when I can't find something enjoyable because the client is so difficult, then I enjoy the difficulty. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> and enjoying the difficulty is, if you can't enjoy your difficulties in life, you're going to be miserable at least a goodly part of the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would have said, if I can't find something enjoyable, I'm going to think about referring them. But that's even much better. I'm going to enjoy. God, it's clever the way they block that. And that's yeah. really interesting how, how brilliantly they can hold on yeah. to something. And, and these are the people we like to talk about at the water cooler. You say, oh, you wouldn't believe the client yeah. I had to sit with. It's, yeah. What a gift they're giving you, yeah. something to yeah. talk about with your colleagues. I know we're going to need to stop in just a minute. Yeah, yeah. Guys, yeah. Um, Actually, I really would like to continue forever, probably. No! No! <laughs> no! <laughs> the, was, the eternal uh, single session. The eternal thing. The eternal no limit right. single session. Maybe we'll have the next conference in the eternal city, Rome. Yeah, Rome. Oh, yeah. Rome. So it'll be and the I eternal. Wait, yeah. I wait you and you. Uh, but eternal doesn't mean going on for a long time. Yeah. Eternal means timeless. Yeah. No beginning, no end. Single session now yeah. <laughs> by walk-in or appointment ready when you are. If not now, when? <laughs> Fantastic. Guys. I see you in Italy, in Rome, in a few years. Thank you for your time and for everything you do and Later. you did in single session therapy. Yeah.